right, in this first tutorial, in this first lesson, we're going to talk about combinations of functions. Um, for those that are in my class, it's on page 101. Um, but what is a combination of functions? Well, the combination of functions are also properties of functions, sometimes they're called. Properties of functions, okay? Is when you are combining, either adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, or even composing functions. Common ones that you usually have seen in Algebra 2 and sometimes even Algebra 1 and also in pre calculus is that when we're going to take in the sum of two functions. What that means is you see the different notations. Sometimes this is where students really get screwed up. Is that if you add two functions together, like f of x plus g of x, we can write this as f of plus g of x, all right, where we just add the names of the function and then with the output right here. The difference is when you subtract a function with another function or f minus g of x. Once again, the input is in the parentheses. You have to be multiplied. And then you have the product where you multiply to f times g of x, and then you can divide, obviously, g of x can equal zero, and so you're dividing two functions. All right, f of x divided by g of x, and we have that. All right, arithmetic combinations, all right, now when we talk about the domain, the inputs consist of all real numbers to the common, to the domains of both. So if there is values that can go in f of x, all right, and g of x, we combine those two domains, and that's how we figure out our values, okay? And these are all arithmetic combinations, so as we see this, um, the domains are combined with one another, and we only can use numbers that are associated with both. Obviously, the only difference is that g of x cannot equal zero when you're dividing by two. All right, well, let's go through some examples and find out how this works. Um, properties of functions, addition and, and difference. Well, here are two functions I have. This is a uh, quadratic, which is a parabola, and here's a cubic function. Now, most of the time, what students have to do is you simply just have to write the two values together. So, for example, if we have to give you an example of g minus f of x. Now, what does that ask you to do? We have to translate this. This is where students mostly get a little confused. They see this g minus f, and they say, am I multiplying by x now? No. You are actually just taking g of x minus f of x. This right here is another way or shorthand of writing this expression right here. So essentially, what we want to do is we want to take and honestly just take g of x. So we'll use substitution. We take what g of x is, x cubed minus 2. And now we're going to take and subtract or take the opposite of f of x. So now we take f of x, x squared plus 5x minus 1. And now from here, this is the expression, and now we simplify the combination of these two functions creates a different function. How do we figure out that what this different function is? Well, we combine like terms. Make sure you distribute this negative through to each one of the values. All right, because it's the opposite of f of x. We have x squared, x to the 5x, x to the one, negative 1, which is 1, and we combine them. So what we have then is x cubed and minus x squared minus 5x, and that's going to be minus 1. The domain of this combination, because these are two polynomials and are all reals, the domain of this right here is going to be all reals as well. All right, so it's the domain. Now, we can also perform operations. Okay, now how do we do these operations? Well, it's pretty simple. And once again, this is our input. So it's asking us, what is f plus g of 5? So essentially, it's asking for, we're going to take f of 5, so the output of f of 5 plus the output of g of 5. Okay. Or what we could do is take this new function and plug in 5 into this, well, well, into the combination where we have both. So if we wanted to, we could take and create a f plus g of x. I'm sorry that I underlined that. All right. This is a different function. All right. So that's g minus f. But if we wanted to write this one out, we could have x squared plus 5x minus 1 plus x cubed minus 2, and where we have x cubed plus x squared plus 5x minus 3, and that would be our f plus g of x. If I wanted to find f, f plus g of 5, well, I would simply just take and plug in 5 into this function. So I take 5 cubed plus 5 squared plus 5 times 5 minus 3. And essentially, that's all we have to do right here. We could simply just take what we have for f of x, or f of 5, which we know would be 5 squared plus 5 times 5 
minus 1, and add that to the new value it's over here. And maybe I could change this color to something else. Uh, properties, we'll make it blue. All right, we'll take that one. And now we're going to add that to our other G value. So that's right here. So now we're going to be a 5, which I wrote out right here. And we just take 5 cubed minus 2. Okay. And that would be 25 plus 25 minus 1 um, plus 125 plus 5 times 2. And we have 50. And we have plus 125 minus 3. So it appears it's going to be 172. Let me get 172 over here as well. Which will go through 125 plus 25, 25 minus 3. 172. All right. And we get the same response no matter how you do it. Which one is better? It doesn't matter. You can do it either way. All right. So that's adding and subtracting. The next property would be if you are dividing. Well, once again, if we have these two functions, g over f of x. So essentially, that's asking us to write g of x over f of x. Now, remember, f of x in this case cannot equal 0, because it can't have 0 in the denominator. Over here, essentially, what we're asked to find is f of x over g of x. And for this one, g of x cannot equal 0 as well. So as we go through here, we can find out what these two values are. So we're asked to find the equation. Whenever you have this, we're asked to find the equation. So we take g of x, right, x cubed minus 2, over x squared plus 5x minus 1. And that. For this one, we're going to have x squared plus 5x minus 1 over x cubed minus 2. And that's pretty much it. All right, can't plug in zero in the denominator here. You can't plug it in there. All right, um, for your value. No, if we want to find what g of f of negative three is, well, we simply have to find g of negative three over f of negative three. Let me plug that in. So we can take our f of x, our g of x, and take negative three and cube it minus two over our f of negative three. So it'd be negative three squared plus. 5 times negative 3 minus 1. From here, we can have negative 27 minus 2, which gives us negative 29. Near the bottom, we have 9 minus 15 minus 1. And what we have right here would be, appears to be negative, uh, what is that, negative 17, negative 7? Or negative 3, uh, negative 7, yes, that's right. All right, negative 7. Is our answer there, which is 29.7. If I messed up on my arithmetic, I apologize. All right, that's what we got. All right, so those are the two values we have there. Okay, so that is going through the arithmetic combinations of multiplication and division. Oh, sorry, multiplication or product. I guess I didn't do the product. Um, so I guess I can figure it out. If we have the product, we would simply write this. If I want to go f of g of x, what that means is I'm taking f of x times g of x, like so, which would be x squared plus 5x minus 1 times x cubed minus 2. If we write that out, we'd have to simplify it, but that's the product. Okay. So those are the arithmetic properties of functions.